connected to the very rich and aristocratic. Cheers. A world sometimes frozen in time. And wonder how you'd feel in white tie and tails, living it up with the real life Earl and Countess? We're revealing the mysteries of the castle, the real Downton Abbey. It's its own rather amazing world. Plus, other opulent homes, eccentric dukes. I became captain of the Scottish Elephant Polo Team. Who knew there was one? I didn't. And the woman who's becoming the first black marchioness in England. Race doesn't need to determine who you are. Tonight, you're invited to her over-the-top wedding. I am a McQuiston. I think every little girl dreams of a fairy tale wedding. Tonight, nothing is off limits. <laughs> Don't put it on camera. So tell the butler he can retire for the evening. You're watching 2020's Mysteries of the Castle, Beyond Downton Abbey. Here's Amy Robach. Good evening. It is a world frozen in time indeed as so many parts of the country are frozen tonight too. So what better place to curl up with a cup of tea in a roaring fireplace than Downton Abbey? Millions of you have been tuning in for the intrigue and romance this year and can't wait for the big season finale tomorrow night on PBS Masterpiece. So join us now for your first class accommodations to the real Downton Abbey. 70 miles outside of London, in the rolling hills of rural England, is Highclere Castle, home of the hit series Downton Abbey. Who knew that this castle, with its high-priced decor and high-toned staff, would give birth to a TV smash? Was Highclere Castle the inspiration for Downton Abbey? I've always loved it as a house. I find it very intriguing. Highclere Castle is far more than just a fictional set on Downton Abbey. The Carnarvon family has lived here for 300 years. But in the 21st century, this is still the home of a real-life Earl and Countess. It's the center of our lives. How many rooms are there? I don't know. There's two <laughs> or three hundred rooms in the house and 50 to 80 bedrooms. Give or take 30. Yes. <laughs> the house has always welcomed people from prime ministers, kings and queens. The Carnarvons have lived here for centuries, but it's the aristocrats, the Crawleys, that fans of the show have grown to know and love. Welcome to Downton. The Earl of Grantham, his wife, Lady Cora, and their three daughters, a mashup of period drama and pure soap opera. I'm not what you think I am. Downton was the surprise PBS hit that dished the dirt about the Granthams, an Earl's family struggling to keep family and fortune intact. Oh, good. Let's talk about money. The series, set in the early 1900s, has lords and ladies of the manor dressed to impress. Historically correct? How important is it to you? to have it be as historically accurate as possible. Oh, I know it's very important. Even if you don't know anything about that period, there's something about it that f you, you sort of think, I can believe this. I understand how it works. Of course, Downton's decadent way of life requires an army of servants, cooks and kitchen maids, footmen and valets. People who lived the upstairs life grew up with these servants around them, but they were like, well, they were from another planet. They weren't exactly human. Upstairs, they're invisible. Downstairs, they're the main event. We're servants, you and me. And they pay us to do as we're told, that's all. If you've ever wondered how a housemaid would get to Downton, the Lady Magazine was the LinkedIn of the servant set. What am I to do? Why don't I put an advertisement in the Lady? It's always the best place to start. Employment ads for the wealthy family since 1885, and they're still going. From cooks to housekeepers like Mrs. Hughes, here's a real ad from 100 years ago. She will require great judgment to bear herself prudently, courteously, and with tact. She may find it difficult with, to withstand and overcome the jealousies and bickering of the inferiors in the household. That just goes to show these households were full of bickering, backstabbing, and people trying to get one over on each other. What's interesting is that in the servants' hall, the hierarchy was just as strict as it was upstairs. So, butlers at the top. At Downton Abbey, Carson, 
the starchy butler rules the Crawley household with a prim and proper fist. Downton is a great house, Mr. Bates. His real-life counterpart is Colin Edwards, who served three generations of earls. I'm the castle butler. I look after the family, the dinners, the lunches, the breakfasts. Generally, just make sure that uh, they have everything that they require. And who taught him how? The butler to the queen. You need a lot of practice to be able to uh, set out a table, present yourself to the guests. I don't lay the table like this at home. Once upon a time, Colin served only the private needs of the Carnarvon family. Today, Highclere rents itself out for parties, corporate events, and weddings. Yes, for just $25,000, anyone can get married just like Lady Mary. Can you imagine what the damage a Countess of Grantham would say of the idea of someone, you know, from the village getting married in Downton? Yeah, the very idea! One new revenue stream? Tourists chasing down dreams. Okay, so welcome to Downton Abbey Tour. Remember, you can't take photos inside the castle, but they do have a guidebook that you can purchase. So during the tourist season, Colin's white gloves are off. Twenty-eight pounds fifty, please. Thank you. In one way, I preferred if it was more family orientated, but the family wouldn't survive without all the corporate work that we do. It has. This is now a business. Gravy, yes, please. A business without some traditional perks for the current Lord Carnarvon. You don't have personal butlers dressing you each No, <laughs> it is, I'm afraid it doesn't really, really well at that. They're not waking us up with uh, cups of tea and, and, and breakfast in bed and all the rest of it. Come on then. But living here is still a gracious form of time travel. You can feel as if you're miles from London. It's a, a magic place to go riding. Views through the trees, views of the landscape. It's about eating well, riding or playing tennis or croquet or shooting. And then meeting up for lunch and conversation. Pretty lucky. In Downton days with 50 plus bedrooms, double library, formal dining room, I could go on. Highclere needed a staff of 60. Now it's down to 20. Because we do it every day, it's actually not as complicated as you think. Anna Dominguez is the housekeeper at Highclere. Well, obviously, we want to maintain the standard um, of the house on a daily basis. And housework, that turns out to be a timeless chore. 120,000 square feet of space, all spotless, without pledge or any of that modern stuff. We use dusters and natural beeswax and nothing else. Uh, it's the only way to maintain and preserve um, its natural qualities. Anna's fictional counterpart on Downton is Anna Bates. I'm Anna, the head housemaid. Actress Joanne Frogrid says she has the inside scoop on what may have been the toughest part of being a maid. The worst thing of filming the first two series was the corsets, especially for a housemaid, how, how people used to manage doing manual tasks and cleaning a house and these things. In the series, viewers cheer for the downstairs folks, but let's face it, we dream of being the ones drinking the champagne, not pouring it. When you watch something like Downton, you know, you might imagine that you're Lady Mary or the Earl of Grantham or, you know, upstairs. I don't think anybody watches it and think, oh, really wish I was Mrs. Patmore, or I really wish I was the kitchen maid, or, oh, I long to be a footman. When Mysteries of the Castle, Beyond Downton Abbey continues. A glittering new jewel in aristocracy's crown. I think every little girl dreams of a fairy tale wedding. She's becoming the first black marchioness in England when we come back. But first, have you ever wondered how much it would cost to live it up like the Downton crowd in today's dollars? With gas and electricity, oil, water, insurance, maintenance, all the staff, security, and every other incidental. According to one estimate, the grand total comes to almost $700,000 a month. That's over $8 million a year.
It's one of the most scandalous storylines this season on Downton Abbey. The black American jazz singer who shocks the upper crust by romancing Lady Rose. And now, a very present day real life romance is breaking the race barrier on a glorious walk down the aisle. Emma McQuiston is not unlike many young women, hoping one day to find Mr. Right. <laughs> I think every little girl dreams of a fairy tale wedding. But Emma's dream is coming true because that diamond tiara is made of real diamonds. If you've got diamonds, you should wear them. Her Mr. Right? It's a pretty surreal experience. It's totally yeah. surreal. Is a real aristocrat. This summer, when the glamorous Emma married Seol and Finn, the Viscount Weymouth, she was making history. I am Emma Twister. Why? Well, the wedding was what you might call big. 355 guests, a staff of almost 200, the affair taking place on his estate called Longleat, the biggest private home in England. Grand, yes, but what made it historic is the fact that Emma is breaking the race barrier about to become England's very first black marchioness. That's the wife of a Marquess, just one step below Duchess. The match made news. Emma understood why. It is noteworthy that I will be the first black marchioness. She told Tatler magazine back in May just before the wedding. There's class and then there's the racial thing. It's a jungle and I'm going through it, discovering things as I grow up. But today she seems more at ease. We did the wedding pictures in here. Yeah. As she told us in her first American television interview. You know, hopefully race doesn't need to determine who you are, what you're like, or where you need to be. Of course, it should be irrelevant. If we're going to think about it, I think we'll have to think it's a good thing, surely. Royal watchers agree. I think everybody who saw the pictures of the first black marchioness, Lady Weymouth, I think everyone was rather thrilled, actually, because it felt like at last the aristocracy was beginning to represent, you know, the country as a whole. It was at another family wedding that the two first met as children. She was just three years old. In my mind, Emma was always a, a child or a teenager, you know. And we re-met and Emma was now an adult <laughs> and, um, and uh, a new uh, dynamic ensued. The little girl he remembered had blossomed into a bombshell. It was like, wow, you're definitely not 15 anymore. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, there, really there, there, was, there was that wow moment. Though a commoner, Emma comes from wealth. Her mother is a British socialite and her father an Oxford-educated Nigerian oil tycoon. Things get really interesting on Siolan's side of the family. His father is Alexander, the notorious Marquess of Bath. He's quite a sort of flamboyant character. He basically looks like something out of Harry Potter. Long hair, beard, you know, incredible robes. Wait a minute. Very gaudy clothes, a cross between Dumbledore and Gandalf. He has had a series of wifelets, he calls them, which are basically mistresses who live in various parts of the house. He's covered longly with these very large, very lurid, sometimes quite pornographic murals that he's painted himself. So here you are, you in your beautiful 18th century stately home and your dad has painted naked women all over the wall. You can see that might be quite challenging. What's the other one called? Uh, Alfie, uh, isn't Alfie. It? Alfie. Yeah. Compared to their parents' generation, Emma and Siolan right. seem, well, downright traditional. I think we just want it to be classic and timeless. And although they do have staff, it's nothing like the days of Downton Abbey. These are the original bells that they would have pressed, like Downton Abbey. We don't use them anymore. <laughs> but they do have help, and Emma needs it. Isn't it great? Now that the wedding is over, it's time to redecorate. Then also, we need to find some side tables. For most of us, that might mean a trip to Ikea. For Emma, it involves a journey through the huge house to find what's been stored away. It feels quite magical up here. Sort of makes you feel like Alice in Wonderland, because there's lots of doors all locked all the time. When you open one, inside are treasures. Ooh. Ah, this is, this is all the reserve a lot. Some of it's waiting to be conserved. Okay, 610 paintings in the inventory. Wow. Is this really a home? It looks more like the Metropolitan Museum of Art. 
OK, we need to move the large painting, which is just inside this room. Emma is replacing some of her father-in-law's favorite lurid frescoes with some more conventional artwork she's found in the attic. Well done. <laughs> in this place, it takes a village to hang a painting. Uh, it's the Battle of the Amazons, yes. so it's quite a dramatic picture. I just love the, the, the collection of horses and people and soldiers and armor and flags, and, and there's a lot going on. This is the estate office here, where Siolin goes to work every day. When Emma married Siolin, she not only married a man, she married a business. A display of family archives and an ice cream shop. She's really marrying a house which has a couple of restaurants, it's a wedding venue, it's a conference centre, an amusement park. I mean, it's like you're marrying into, into Disneyland, basically. Believe it or not, there's an actual safari park right on the estate. It was the first of its kind in the world outside Africa, and today attracts almost a million visitors a year. So pretty. The new leading lady of Longleat loves being with the animals, small and large. <laughs> so sweet. Woo! Hi. You're a bit cold. So we had to ask the obvious question. Tell the truth about what? Did you marry Siolan for his animals? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> The glamorous 27-year-old actually has career plans all her own. Quite vampy. Vampy. She's interested in fashion, posing for the cover of You magazine just a few months ago. She has a food blog and ambitions of having her own cooking show. While we were there, she whipped up one of her specialties. I'm making some ravioli for dinner. I'm using crab. Mm -hmm. It's best not to overfill them. Put these into the boiling water. There you go. <laughs> While she's hoping to win over the food critics, Emma's new husband is sure she has all the ingredients to be a success. Here's an individual who's extremely bright, extremely beautiful, extremely responsible, so and and yet extremely fun-loving to boot. So you really have a package of, of all of the qualities there. <laughs> Everything, including love of tradition, found in this one of Britain's newest aristocratic couples here in the land of Downton. Coming up on Mysteries of the Castle, Beyond Downton Abbey. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite you to dining room while dinner be served. At the most over-the-top meal you've ever seen when we return. But first, the real Downton Abbey is real estate catnip. What would a broker's selling price be? Let's see. Hundreds of rooms, dozens of bathrooms, a double living room, dining room, gargantuan kitchen, wood-burning fireplaces, multi-car garage, servants' rooms, stables. And remember, location, location, location. According to one estimate, asking price would be over $400 million. And now back to Amy Robach and Mysteries of the Castle Beyond Downton Abbey. This may look like a scene from Downton Abbey, but it's a real life dinner at eight. Good evening, sir. Top hats and tails, candlelight and champagne, and those oh so lush and elegant rooms. Highclere Castle, where Lord and Lady Carnarvon still party like it's 1910s. Tonight's bash is a fundraising event held by Galactic Unite, a charity that helps provide science, math, and technology education to children around the world. I'm waiting for Carson to walk in. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> to find Carson, you have to go to a place hidden deep beneath the castle. This is the command center for downstairs at Highclere. And the maestro down here is head chef Paul Brooks Taylor. Hey, here we go. I became a chef because I love cooking. I love playing with food. I started at 14 years old in a butchery. He trained in France. God, I hate the French. Joke. No, I do. And worked in some of the best restaurants in the country. The greatest part about our job is you never know it all. You're always learning. And people who work in kitchens say they know it all. Alive. Chef Paul runs his kitchen like a general. Can we have a quick chef's briefing, guys, please? Briefings. Almina's chocolate fondant and honey ice cream. Orders. Clean film, squeeze it. How's the turbot? Rich and I'll pour in. Lots of orders. 56 degrees, okay? Must be 56 degrees. No problem, chef. You've got to love it. If you don't love it, do a different job. 
please melt. <laughs> We've got... Paul and his team are busy planning a five-course period dinner for tonight's event. Dinner at Downton, if you will. Often Paul's cooking is inspired by old family favourites. This is one of the family recipes that uh, Lady Carmen has given to me. I, I believe it comes from Lady Almina. It's a... We, we, we kind of tweaked it. It used to be like a chocolate sponge, quite enriched with really nice chocolate. He wonders whether Mrs Patmore could ever serve a dish like this. Is it fair to say that women back then did more cooking than men? Yes, probably. Were they any good at it? Probably not. Do you? Notice the difference? The kitchen, once ruled by women, has now been taken over by men. Today's kitchens are run by men because we are we're committed, we're passionate, and we want to be the best we can be. That's what we do, that's what we're paid for, and touch wood so far, it's never gone wrong. Nine hours before the dinner guests are to arrive, the flowers do, carefully selected by the royal floral decorator Paul Thomas. When you're working in a room like this, you mustn't try and do anything contemporary. For this night, the dining room table will become the centerpiece of Highclere Castle. The room is a sort of lovely soft gold colour, and it would be wrong to put more of that in. We need to put something to contrast, so red is a great colour. While Paul fawns over the flowers. Correct, thank you. The man ultimately in charge of all right. things upstairs is Louis Quello. I can serve you five course meal or pick the right wine to go right through, but definitely I can't do it. A British accent, not just yet. A native of Portugal, Lewis lives on the estate and has been with the Carnarvons for five please? years. He must ensure everything on the table is perfectly placed. Every knife and fork. Dessert, main consumers, fish. Every glass. I mean, what they do on TV on Downton Abbey is something that we, the family's been doing for more than 200 years. We like doing perfect. I mean, the food is very good, the service needs to be very good. Um, and we are very tough with ourselves. We triple check so the Lord and Lady Carnarvon don't have to be hard with us. Lewis knows his job so well, he was even telling the set designers for Downton Abbey a thing or two. We did give him some tips actually at the beginning, first series. Um, they kind of had the glasses the other way around. Glasses wrong way around? Can't have that. Yeah, but you're quite right. There's a tiny table setting crisis when Lewis and Paul discover the candelabra is not exactly center. No, 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 the candelabra yeah. has to move a centimeter over that way. A centimeter? Seriously? Seriously. I think we should be there. Yep. Oh, is the wine chilled yet? With time running out, downstairs in the kitchen. Do not bring me the fish if the shot tatatana is not done. They're supposed to come together, yeah? Chef Paul is almost ready to go. It's about an hour till canapes go. Everybody knows what their role is, so I don't interfere. I'll go down and check out how the kitchen's okay. doing and say hello. So you've added some cucumber? Yeah, we just wrapped it. Everyone's falling into their next role to perform. Upstairs, Lewis reviews his troops. Going over the menu. The first wine will be the Chablis Premier Cru, and we'll serve that before we serve the starter. Once we clean the sorbet, we then serve the red wine. We'll then serve the venison. And who is serving whom? Position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At 7 p.m. sharp, the first guests arrive. <laughs> How absolutely lovely, thank you. It's going well. I mean, we just put the butters on the table and just about to light the candles, and but we're ready. So we got about 10 minutes before they go on a tour, and then um, around 8 o'clock, they should be here. Yeah. Um, all in. Looking good. A few final touches. You have to admit, this table does look absolutely perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to the dining room while dinner be served. Coordination between downstairs chefs and upstairs servers is key. The veggie for on three, veggie on six, please. Everyone knows their job. The guest job to enjoy. It's lovely. There's so much history here. It wraps itself around you, and, and it's spectacular. I'm so thrilled that we had the opportunity to come. Uh, I think it went very well. I mean, the wine was good, the food was good, the service was good. I think all the guests are very happy. We did it. The team, again, have made me look very good, which is lovely. But it's a team effort. It is good fun, and there's hopefully a lot of laughter, and I love bringing people together, and that is the joy of, of a place like this. So it's a phenomenal tradition. A phenomenal tradition in a timeless place called High Clare Castle. When we come back, he's a duke, a dad. 
He's carried the Queen's train. I bought my first bicycle with the money that I earned from it. Yeah, from carrying the Queen's yeah, train. That's <laughs> A duchess and duke roll up their noble sleeves to save the estate. When Mysteries of the Castle Beyond Downton Abbey continues. But first, you may recognize this classic British village. But this isn't the real village by the real castle. To get to the town next to Downton Abbey, you'd have to do more than stroll down the road like they do on the show. You'd have to walk 44 miles to get here the picturesque town of Bampton. Recognize this church? This is where Lady Mary and Matthew Crawley finally tied the knot. Today, people flock here to exchange their own wedding vows. Just how does the other half live? You might be very surprised. Here in this beautiful castle called Inverary lives one of Scotland's most prestigious and ancient families. The Duke of Argyle, as in Argyle socks, yes, he wears them, is just one step below royalty. One of his ancestors commanded the army of Mary, Queen of Scots. He is the head of the Clan Campbell, the largest in Scotland, a man of many titles. But did you say 26 titles? 26 or 27, I think. At the last You've count. lost count. <laughs> He's also a dad, the father of three small children. His wife, Eleanor, who grew up a Cadbury, as in chocolate, met the Duke when she was 18. The first time I came here, I was like, oh my God, look at that house on the side of the road. Look at it. You come over the bridge, and that first glimpse of the castle is pretty impressive. And who knew you'd one day be living in those walls? Who knew? Certainly not me. It's a house that should look familiar to Downton Abbey fans. They all came and they arrived in their, their carriages and their cars there. It's a grand entrance. It's a grand entrance. It's nice to have two. Um, we well, actually got three. Three, <laughs> I don't, of course. I don't, want to be, I don't want to be posh, but I've got three entrances. <laughs> Every corner of Inverary Castle seems steeped in history, from the outside portico. This porch here was put on for Queen Victoria when she came to see her daughter. Uh, so she didn't get wet when she got out of her carriage. Oh my God. To semi-secret places, like these hidden stairs where staff could maneuver through the house unseen. The Duke's family tree stretches back hundreds of years. That's a picture of my grandfather. This is uh, me being a page of honor to the Queen. That's me there. Page to the Queen? Not bad as a first job. And what was that like? Terrifying. But quite fun at the same time. So you carried the Queen's train? Yeah, it was amazing. You got paid. I bought my first bicycle with the money that I earned from it. Yeah, from was... carrying the Queen's yeah, train? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't his last job. Elephant polo, anyone? We got them on the run. It was just oh, ecstatic. I became captain of the Scottish elephant polo team. Who knew there was one? I didn't. <laughs> While ancestors of the high-born Duke and Duchess were regal, this couple consider themselves rather down-to-earth, in part out of necessity. I think people always assume we're going to be terribly old and grand and, you know, be wearing ermine and a crown or something, but... You know, most of the time we'll be in, you know, jeans and a T-shirt or whatever, and you will know, be working in the shop or talking to people, and I think people say, right, is that the Duke, is that the Duchess? No, it can't be. Wait a minute, did he say working in the shop? That's right. While the Duchess sells souvenirs in the basement, the Duke wipes up mud off the steps and lords over repairs to the electric gate. But I think some water's gone into it and it's decided to stop working. There's always something that needs to be fixed. You know, you're never finished. No, nope. I always <laughs> ongoing. Rather than a life of simply being catered to by staff, this couple has put themselves and their home to work. You, you are a, a working Duke and Duchess. I mean, you, you roll up your sleeves. I, you have to in a place like this. Today we open from 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night, seven days a week, and it's run as a business. You know, we're here to keep the roof on. Along with the daily tours costing about $16 per person, there's the gift shop supervised by the Duchess herself. I took it over from my mother-in-law two years ago. And it's great, we try and sell as many Scottish-made things as we can. So we get candles from the Isle of Skye, which isn't so far from here. 
So supporting the local economy as well, the local artisans. These are hot items. I, don't, I still don't think this would get my husband to cook. I'm just saying. Every dollar counts, so the Duke takes the time to sign books himself. A couple of years ago, we were sort of wondering why some of the guidebooks didn't sell quite as well as they, they should do. And someone said, well, you know, why don't you sign a couple and see what happens? And of course, as soon as I signed them, people just picked them up. Another revenue stream? Giving guests a taste of one of the famous traditions of the estate, also featured on Downton Abbey, deer stalking. It's quite a simple process, actually. Don't let them hear you, see you, or smell you. Yep, now they've run away into the trees. Oh well, that's stalking for you. Some days you get lucky, some days you don't. While the Duke and Duchess here are especially hands-on, Inverary Castle is hardly unusual. Like the other major set used for Downton Abbey, Highclere Castle, it's a tourist attraction. Of the more than 1,500 great estates in Britain, more than half are now open to the public, advertising for weddings, tours, and conferences. They also rent out as film sets. The Duke of Argyle says he lobbied to draw Downton's producer to Inverary. You know, this is the main armory hall of the castle. Far more than I do. And I really remember this from Downton Abbey. They came in through the garden, through there, and into here. There's no doubt the exposure on the series has paid off. Fantastic. This picture. was used for all the publicity for the Christmas special. I, I loved your idea, though, possibly about putting a cutout hole and a cutout hole. So you two can be part of the dance and have you? <laughs> I don't think they'd let me do that, but it would be quite funny. <laughs> I think it would be quite funny yeah. too. Despite all the tourists wandering about day and night, the Duke and Duchess have managed to keep at least part of their castle a true home. This isn't part of the tour. This is all completely private now, so once you get onto the Campbell Tartan, then you're on the private side. They took us on a very personal behind-the-scenes tour. Many things reminded you this is no normal house. Like stair railings built to accommodate those big hoop skirts of days gone by. But there is the normal stuff of a normal house. Coats and shoes on the floor. I love looking at the weaponry and then the kids' bike helmets. <laughs> you know, we've got spears and... And, and fishing rods. And then we've got princess stickers. <laughs> Very cute model airplanes. I, I had to chuckle when I walked by because I feel like th doesn't every home have a jar of change just in case? The lady of the house even does her own laundry. Times have changed. You don't need you don't need a housemaid anymore. You don't need a whatever. I can load a washing machine. The you know so can he. So can so can the kids. At times, the public and private do collide. At night time off when you're having your supper and you're engrossed in whatever is on the television that night. You know. And they all can just And you suddenly in. turn around and there's this, hi. You're in a bit of an aquarium. I think so one of the things that we're very proud of is the fact that this is not a museum, it's a family home. This is where we live. We're, you know, we're part of it. And for those who say, do we really need dukes and duchesses in this day and age? You say what? I see myself as running a business. Um, I just happen to have a name that I've inherited. So, um, you know, it's my duty and responsibility to, to keep to those traditions. And so the tradition of keeping up tradition continues. The land, the great house, the sounds of Scotland living on in the oldest son, the castle's young heir, who's just started learning to play the bagpipes. That sounds pretty good. He's got to do 20 minutes. That's a, that's a special treat, though, I imagine, for the, for the visitors, to know that a real family lives I here. I think it might be more of a treat when he's learned a bit more. <laughs> the moment it's quite limited, what he's, what he's coming up. <laughs> when we return, Scandal, Love, the real inspiration for Downton's heart-stopping romance. The woman next door to her had smuggled one of the men of the house party into her bed. When Mysteries of the Castle Beyond Downton Abbey continues. And now back to Mysteries of the Castle Beyond Downton Abbey. Love at Highclere. On the surface, oh so proper. But Downton Abbey, a period drama, can be a bodice-ripping soap opera. Sex and scandal for all. Is it safe? 
trust me. Sometimes these storylines get downright scandalous. Are you actually taking real examples of what happened? I was staying at a, a, a house and the host had just found the diary of his great, great aunt. And what had happened is the woman next door to her had smuggled one of the men of the house party into her bed and he had died of a heart attack. That was the origin of the Turkish diplomat. Lady Mary's one night stand with Pamuk, a Turkish diplomat, ends badly. He was alive and suddenly he cried out and then he was dead. The scene of that scandal is one of the most popular attractions on the tours at Highclere. They want to know where the bedroom is where the little incident with the Tur Turkish diplomat took place. Oh, yeah. So they love it when we show them the, the very red room upstairs where he was dragged back to. And I would say, serve him right. <laughs> Big and naughty boy. <laughs> One of the most provocative stories of all is the relationship between Lady Sybil and the family chauffeur. For now, God knows it's enough that I can kiss you. It's fiction, but once again, based on real aristocratic hijinks. Lady Sybil and Tom Branson. Tom Branson. Well, that really came from talking to a, a woman at dinner. And she said, well, my great aunt eloped with the groom and I thought well if she can go off with the groom she can go off with the chauffeur. There was not that much mixing I mean you would of course have you know the son of the house maybe um, having a dalliance with one of the maids and stuff but it's very very rare for those kind of romances to end in marriage. Can I kiss you before I go? There was quite a bunch of soap operas going on inside High Claire as well throughout the years. There have been lots of stories and... <laughs> some are definitely unprintable. I believe some have been, you know, taken and, and used in the show, sprinkled in here and there, because it is quite a history. In the well, series, a maid sleeps with a convalescing patient when World War I turned Downton into a hospital ward. What the bloody hell? Really? I know precisely what you were doing, Major. Same thing happened at the real Highclere Castle with the Countess at the time, Lady Almina. Well, funnily enough, during the hospital scene in the second series, an auburn-haired nurse did have a relationship with one of the patients, and Almina walked in on them and walked out again, and she had to ask the auburn-haired nurse to go, which all the other soldiers found very upsetting because she was very pretty and a very nice addition. But along with all the Downton scandals, true love blooms beneath the servant's stairs. The lady's maid, Anna, and the mysterious wounded valet, Bates. With this ring, I plight thee my truth. We found a real life Anna and Bates in a tiny rustic lodge on the estate. <laughs> I'm Tom Hibbard and I'm a gamekeeper on the Carnarvon Estates. My name's Kaylee Stevens and basically I work at High Clear Tea Rooms, just clearing, waitressing, um, serving hot food and drinks. My partner is Tom, who's one of the gamekeepers on the High Clear Estate. What I like most is basically just him as an overall person in his job because obviously it just fits me. I'm a country person. You can't be a gamekeeper and be with some posh and prim, you know, lover because it just doesn't work like that. I think the reason we connect so much is because we're so different, yet we still want to get to the same points. A quiet evening in, watching TV with the wood burner going. Um, so it's just simple stuff like that, really. Yeah, I would cook. Yeah. She washes up. They always say opposites attract. <laughs> you know, me and Tom, we fight all the time, and, but it's just a part of a relationship, you know. You have your ups and downs, but you've got to go through it, and if you didn't have them, there'd be something drastically wrong. 17-year-old Kaylee, like Anna, is strong and modern. My dream is to be a jockey and race. I think my inspiration started when I was 13, seeing how racehorses moved. And that's when my passion started, really. I've wanted this for so long. Her very